All right, guys, welcome back to another video, um, another week of math. Yay, math from home. So this is going to be uh, Math 7, uh, Lesson 101, and it's going to be translating expressions into equations. So huge disclaimer, I'm not going to be using the board quite as much because this is about understanding what you read and translating from words into numbers and math expressions. So uh, that's something that you have to work on. Uh, as I told you, it's kind of like reading comprehension. I mean, a uh, word problem, I believe it's about 90% reading comprehension, 10% math. If you, Because most of you already should know how to add, how to subtract, how to multiply, or how to divide. And if you don't, well, you're in luck because your parents, I'm pretty sure, can help you out in that. So, you know, you could go ask them, all right? Um, but, as I said, if you don't understand what you're reading, then that's a huge problem. That's a whole nother problem altogether. So you always have to understand what you read, then you can actually do the math. But a lot of people want to do the math first and not even care about what it says, and that's not how it works. So I've always told you the same thing. So today is gonna to be a little bit different of a lesson. I might actually focus a little bit more on the book, and I will show you stuff in the book, uh, and, and that way uh, we can actually get over this lesson because this lesson is actually not that hard. It has three examples, and we will see uh, how it goes. And if you want to practice, a good idea is to always obviously do the lesson practice, and your parents can check it for you uh, because they actually get the answers before you get the answers. So uh, the answers, you get them just in case your parents couldn't have checked it the day before or you have any questions or anything like that. The answers, I give them to you the day after the lesson is due, but they actually received it the day of the lesson. So if you want to practice this, which is a good idea, I think it's a really good idea, then you have to ask your parents to let you... Um, know what the answers are for the practice it. Not before you do it, but after you do it, okay? Because some of you are just gonna go running to your parents and say, Mr. Silva said that you have to give us the answers and you haven't even done it. So you have to do it first and then check. Not ask for the, la the answers and then, oh yeah, I already understood how to do it because you're not gonna get it, all right? So let's actually get into this lesson. All right, so this is your book, uh, Lesson 101, page 705. And at the top, very important, all right? Don't just think just because they give you this little table right here that you already know how to do every single problem because at the top, it says examples of translations. You're going to have many ways of actually um, trying to present to you a problem in many different ways. Like for example, it says twice a number means two times n. n meaning the number and you multiply the number times two. So you could do twice a number or, two, uh, or a number uh, times two or a number multiplied twice or there are many ways to do it. So this is an example. Twice a number is two n, right? Uh, maybe I was covering it with my hand right there, but right there you can see twice the number is 2n. And the best part is you can follow along with your book. Yay! This is like better than Dora the Explorer because you can actually follow along and uh, I'm not going to be like, uh, ready niños? Okay, let's go. Okay, I'm not, I'm not that type of guy. Alright, so we have uh, five more than a number. Alright, so that's <coughs> Sorry, I choked on my own bad joke. All right, so then we have x plus 5, right? So it's going to be 5 more than a number. So a number could be x, a number could be n, a number could be a, a number could be h. So it doesn't really matter what letter you use. Just understand that a number means a variable because we don't know what number it is. All right, so it says 5 more than a number is going to be x plus 5. Hooray! And then it says 3 less than a number is going to be a minus 3. You see how this is very differently wor worded? I mean, this is worded differently because usually you say a minus 3 or a number minus 3, but here they say 3 less than a number. So 3 less than a number, it should be this. So you always have to understand what you're... <coughs> 
<coughs> excuse me. You always have to understand what you <coughs> read before you actually go and do it. Because most of you actually just want to go on ahead and do it. But then you guys don't even know what you're doing. All right. Then it says half of a number. Half of a number could be one half times H or H divided by two. Because uh, one half of a number is also H divided by two. So it doesn't matter. Uh, you can use whatever you want here. And then it says the product of a number and seven. So a product, again, look, it says twice a number, 2n up top. And it's a multiplication, right? So it says twice a number and it's a multiplication. But in the bottom, it says the product of a number and seven. And it's 7b. So you see, there's many ways to illustrate the same thing. And then we get to the good one, which is 17 is five more than twice a number. Okay, before we actually look over this part, let's actually read that again. It says 17 is five more than twice a number. So before we even do anything, we understand that 17 is a number. Okay, that's easy. Is, I've told you so many times that is, when we come to math, it means equal. So 17 equals five more than twice a number. Twice a number, because it says it right here in the top, is going to be 2n. So twice a number is going to be 2n, right? And 5 more, it's just like when it says 3 less than a number, is going to be a minus 3. 5 more than a number is going to be plus 5. So it's going to be 17 equals 2n plus 5. So look at that. If you understand the sentence, you will understand how to write it. Okay, let's look at example one. So I'm going to move the camera just a little bit, you know, roller coaster. Woo! Okay, right there. All right, that's enough fun for right now. Okay, later on, if you finish your math, maybe you can have more fun. So it says, if five less than twice a number is 17, what is the number? What? What did it does that mean? Well, let's actually pay attention to what it says. If five less than twice a number, well, we already did five more than twice a number, so five less than twice a number has to be 2n minus 5. Oh, okay. Equals 17. Whoa, that makes it a lot easier. So that's what it says. 2x minus 5 equals 17. You see what I mean? You have to understand what you read, not just read it. It's not a race. And then you're going to solve for x. And the way to solve for x is right here in your book. And hopefully, I mean, this is not this lesson. Hopefully, you already know how to solve for x. And it's going to be 11. Example 2, I'm not going to do the same thing I did in example 1, which is I literally read it word for word and I, I explained it. But I want you to understand what happens. There's a, a taxi company, right? They charge 150 just by getting into the cab or into the taxi, you get charged $1.50. Now, obviously, this is an old book. Uh, it doesn't happen like that any anymore. And even if um, you're going to use a mode of transportation, I am guessing that most of you would not use a taxi. You're probably going to use Uber. You're probably going to use um, Lyft. And because you ask for them from your phone, uh, they literally tell you how much it's going to be before you even get into the car. But, uh, uh, but you know, before all those wonderful inventions and before the cell phone was um, used the way that it's used today, we actually had to get into the cab and tell the cab where to go. And then the cab would actually start charging by the mile. Okay, so that's what it says, $3 per mile. Right here it says $3 per mile. So uh, it says write an equation. So understand something. Before you even move, the taxi would charge you $1.50. So at the beginning, it would be $1.50 plus what is going to be added. Well, it's not like it's going to be subtracted because they're not going to really subtract. It's not like they're, the taxi company wants to give you money. They are, they are charging you because they're, they're, giving you, they're, they're giving you a service. They're lending you a service and you have to pay them. And so once you understand that, you're going to, do, to be, oh, okay, so I have to add 150 
Okay, that's fine. At the beginning of of the cab, I just have 150, and then for each mile, I'm going to get three dollars. So if you go two miles, it would be six dollars. If you go three miles, it would be nine dollars plus the dollar fifty. Don't forget the dollar fifty, right? And so what happens is that you're going to have to multiply. 3 times m. 3 times m right here means 3 times a mile. So because each mile charge is charged $3. And so uh, that's how you're going to write it. The total amount, t, total amount, it's going to be 3 times m, 3m plus $1.50 or 1 1.5. And then they ask you, to find how much would it be for 6.4 miles. So again, because this lesson is not about multiplying or uh, finding uh, T or solving for T or M, uh, you have to know what it is. And in fact, uh, please realize that even though our, our equation has two variables, T and M, M is miles, and they give you the miles here in the problem. It says 6.4 miles, so you only have to find T, all right? T, the total price, which is $20.70. All right, so if you thought I was going to do the whole lesson just by explaining, to you, uh, explaining it to you from the book, you better think again, because this one I can actually do on the board, and it makes more sense for me to do it on the board than actually showing you in the book. The other ones were because there were words, all right? There were too many words and you had to actually just go down and break down the words so that you could actually understand what you were supposed to do. Now in here, what we're going to do is we're gonna say we have a straight line, right? So all uh, straight angles measure how much? Yes, that's correct, 180 degrees. All right. So it's going to measure 180 degrees. And then what we're going to say is that, well, we have this angle and added to this angle is going to be 180 degrees. And that makes perfect sense. So I'm going to say 2x plus x equals 180 degrees. Now understand this is uh, from the lesson combining like terms. This and this are alike because X and X are the same letter and they have the same exponent, which is one, right? And so because of that, we're going to add them together. Now understand something that I've been saying. All variables have a coefficient and an exponent. The coefficient of this one right here, just because you can't see it and it's not like a you know, put it really tiny or anything like that is because in math we don't really do that. But the coefficient is going to be one. And so it's really easy. What is two plus one? Two plus one is three. Well, that is advanced math right there. And then we have x, right? Because two apples plus one apple equals three apples. Whoa, crazy. And then what we do here is that we're going to divide by 3 to leave x by itself. And you should probably already know this when uh, we talked about how to solve for uh, the different, um, for x, solve for x actually, solve equations. And so it would be 60 degrees equals x. Yay! So 60 degrees equals x. And uh, one of the things that I have to tell you then is you're not really done because you found that this is 60 degrees, but how much is this? So you have to actually multiply 60 degrees times 2, which is 120 degrees. And I know that some of you actually already knew what it was without even multiplying, but you know, you have to be thorough sometimes. And that's it. That is the lesson for today, lesson 101, and so I hope that that helps you. And again, if you have any questions, please uh, make, uh, do, make comments either on, on uh, the video or on um, the Google Classroom. Totally had, you know, a moment there where... I forgot. Um, and so please understand that I will try to, my best to actually answer the questions, but understand 
that sometimes I'm answering other questions from other classes and so forth. So be patient, please be patient, number one. Second of all, try to get your questions before three because I usually am more active during the morning with the classes and more interacting with them. And then in the afternoon, I actually either do the videos or do other things that help the class, like take the pictures and plan the post and do everything else that I have to do. And understand, it's uh, six classes... Yes, it's six classes that I have to worry about, so please be patient with me. I'm trying my best to uh, be as available as possible, but thank you again. Uh, <coughs> I already have over 30 subscribers. That's crazy. Oh, and by the way, don't worry about the cough. The cough is because I I'm, I was choking a little bit, and I do need a little bit of water. My, my throat is a little bit dry, but I am perfectly physically fine. I am following the instructions that all the authorities are giving us. And so I hope that you and your family are following them too. And I will see you tomorrow as well. All right. See you.